Hello, BookTube. Well, it's our last mail haul of the week, and it's a small one, only three packages. Uh, but it would feel wrong to go through it without you. So let's see what we have. Uh, is anything fascinating? Ah, okay. Uh, okay, this comes out from Yale in April. It's a part of a series that they started off years ago, and it, uh, it took off. Uh, for baleful reasons, but still, <laughs> any any cause for books is a good one. Uh, this is uh, a little book of archaeology to follow their little book of history and a bunch of other things. Uh, I don't know if this actually is a part of a, you know, an actually titled series that they do, uh, but it's it, it's very short introductions to very large subjects, uh, some of which are really good. So maybe I shouldn't bemoan the buzzfeedification of our attention span. <laughs> uh, so this is this looks rather nice. This has uh, it has uh, spot engravings. So th this could be a lot of fun. Uh, I actually have never read one that I didn't like. So uh, so the series must have some good people doing doing it. Uh, right. So we're off to a somewhat perplexing start. A, a Yale book I did not request, but then I'm on Yale's list. So oh good. All right. This one I did request. Fantastic. Uh, fantastic. This is due in March. Uh, and it is Joyce Tildesley's Nefertiti's Face, the creation of an icon, the famous uh, sculpture of uh, in the round, the famous the famous sculpture of Nefertiti's head uh, that I have seen. Uh, the, the thing that amazes you when you go to see it is how small it is. Uh, that's the same thing that often amazes people about King Tut's tomb mask is the you you expect these things they're so beautiful you expect them and so it's had such a huge outsized impact on our visual culture that you expect the items themselves to be huge uh little is known about nefertiti the egyptian queen whose name means a beautiful woman has come she was the wife of akhenaten a pharaoh who ushered in a dramatic armana age uh and she bore him at least six children she played a prominent role in political and religious affairs but after Akhenaten's death, she apparently vanished and was soon forgotten. Yet Nefertiti remains one of the most famous and enigmatic women who ever lived. Her instantly recognizable face adorns a variety of modern artifacts, from expensive jewelry to cheap postcards, t-shirts, and bags. Uh, she has appeared on page, stage, screen, and opera. In Britain, the, the one, woman, uh, one woman has spent hundreds of thousands of pounds on plastic surgery in the hope of resembling the long-dead royal. Of course, the first thing I'm going to do is YouTube to see if there are pictures of that disaster. <laughs> this enduring obsession is the result of just one object, the lovely and mysterious Nefertiti bust, created by the sculptor Tutmos and housed in Berlin's museum since World War II. Uh, so what we need now, we've, now that you've seen Nefertiti's face, what we need now is for Steve Partridge over on his channel to post on Twitter a picture of himself in the Berlin Museum with... Nefertini's face, right up next to each other. That's what he needs to do on Twitter. <laughs> uh, oh, so this is great, uh, Egyptology. That's great. So we're we're two for two as far as nonfiction goes. And we've got one more to go here for the, to, to round out this week. I don't think I'm going to be getting any of the mail today. If I do, I'll I'll pop on the camera. Uh, okay, this next one is uh, fiction. Uh, it's Mary McCluskey, The Long Deception. I think we saw the advanced copy for this. Can't really tell from uh, on the camera, but these these letters are indented. They're not they're not embossed. They're indented, which is kind of neat. Uh, Allison Eastlake has come a long way from the wild days of her youth in England. Now, instead of streaking her hair purple, dreaming of becoming an artist, uh, her career has uh, she has a career in advertising in Los Angeles and attends black tie dinners with her executive husband. She fears that she is fast becoming the type of person she once despised. When Allison receives news that Sophie has died, the childhood friend, of a drug overdose, leaving behind a slew of unanswered questions, she must go back home. Once there, she unearths reminders of her unruly past, including feelings for Sophie's brother Matt, and finds she is still powerfully attracted to him. Careening dangerously close to full-blown affair, Allison must now make an impossible decision— but when a long-buried secret about Sophie resurfaces, it shatters everything Allison had always believed about the past and forces her to rethink her own life, her marriage, and her future. Huh. Okay, so so who is uh, who is Mary McCluskey when she's at home? Uh, she's author of the novel Intrusion and a number of award-winning short stories. 
She's been published in Salon and The Atlantic and London Magazine, Story Quarterly, uh, in and in a whole bunch of other journals in the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, and Hong Kong. Okay. All right, so she's written a, a thriller uh, that sounds... I mean, the plot is long on predictability, but who knows how it's executed. Um, so let's let's see. We've got... A, it's, a, it's a paltry mail haul today. Uh, this has some items of interest, but... Uh, We've got The Long Deception by Mary McCluskey. Uh, then Nifertiti's Face, which we will soon have a Twitter picture, or we will mob Steve Partridge. <laughs> uh, and then uh, A Little History of Archaeology by Brian Fagan, part of the Yale's Little History series. So there you go. That's a, a fairly modest mail haul. Uh, but mail halls are only part of the game, right? <laughs> this is a short video, but I'll be back with long ones. You can guarantee it. <laughs> so I'll see you soon. Thank you, Book Two.